you for, for enlightening us about uh, the perspective within which you, you uh, develop your, your activities. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador Vimont, we, we're very happy to, to have you. Um, France has uh, uh, launched, I think, uh, at the end of last year, uh, has announced that it wanted to, uh, to launch an initiative for a Middle East Peace uh, Conference, and we'll be happy to hear you more about that. Please. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Professor. Um, I'll be as short as possible first because I've been asked because of time limit and to allow you to, uh, to, uh, to come in with your questions. Then secondly, because I was told listening to Professor Lieberberg that all initiatives are wrong at the moment and <laughs> to some extent I tend to agree with him, but uh, listen more to this. And then also because I understood from Dr. Berlin that Europe is somewhere out of the uh, out of the, um, of the screen, then what about France being one simple mere member of the European Union? But let me try to explain you what we have been trying uh, to, to do, um, which really relies on the understanding that we have to be realistic. And there, contrary to what you may believe, I tend to agree with what many of the speakers, uh, what all the three speakers have said, uh, with much of what they said, because I think this is really the moment where we need to be realistic. And I would like you to understand what is really the purpose of the French initiative, because it's somewhat a bit different precisely from what has happened in the past, because I think we all need to learn lessons from what has been happening in the past. You know, those many initiatives where we put down timetable agenda that cannot be fulfilled, and which undermines the credibility of the international community is something we need to, uh, I would say, to run away from. Um, the purpose of our initiative, and I would like to insist on that because I'm not sure we all uh, may agree on this, but this is very much the opinion of, of uh, the French government. It is about giving a new momentum to the two-state solution because our firm uh, impression is that, in fact, if you look at what's going on on the ground, the frustration, I would say, to a large extent on both sides. And in spite of all the statements that are being put out time and again about the commitment to the two-state solution, the reality is that this solution is slowly slipping away. It's moving out of the window. It's getting out uh, of uh, any real international agenda. And this is what, for the French government, was the most worrisome and, and a, source, a source of great concern, is that without saying so, and with total silence, the two-state solution was moving out, and we have nothing to replace it. The reality is there. We have been talking, and I won't get into this, about a one-state solution or whatever it is. It seems to the French government that this will not work, and therefore, by a way or another, we have to rekindle the little hope that we still have in the, um, in the two-state solution. And what I have heard and what has been said is true. A lot of people are talking that this is no more than a charade, that this is a pure illusion, and precisely because of that, we think it is important for all those who are ready, ready to endorse the two-state solution, it's the moment to say so and to come back and to come out publicly in supporting this. This is what the French initiative is about. Not much more than that, but that for us is enough to, to, uh, to try something of this. Um, because, and I would like here again uh, to take a few minutes just to underline what it is not. And all the criticism that we have received from the beginning seems to me to be somewhat um, uh, wrong and irrelevant. We were told that, first of all, uh, what we were doing is more or less sticking to the status quo and letting the status quo go on because we have no real, you know, new process to put on the table or something of that sort. But it's exactly the contrary. The status quo as it is going on is slowly pushing the two-state solution out. So when we are saying that we want the two-state solution to be well alive and kicking on the uh, international agenda, we're exactly going against the status quo. And I think this is one of the reasons why we have been facing so many difficulties. 
Secondly, we're not at all trying to undermine the existing process and current process. Whether it be the idea of direct talks, we think that precisely when we're trying to put back the two-state solution in the forefront of the discussion, we're helping in some way or another direct talks to come up in due course. We know time is not ripe for two direct talks. It has been stated time and again, and we're not thinking about this. Once again, we're thinking about setting up the right condition and the foundation for a two-state solution so that when time comes, direct talks can be meaningful and can can come at last when time once again will allow for this, when uh, solutions uh, and uh, uh, not only provisional but also final solution can, can, be, um, can be found. We're not talking either about undermining the current processes as they go on. Fernando talked a few minutes ago about the quartet. We are very supportive of the quartet. We think that the quartet report is a good report and that we should support it. It has a lot of very interesting recommendation to which you will certainly come back in a few minutes. Um, and we think it's right. We think that the work being done by the Arab League through its different committees or even the Arab Quartet are useful ways of moving forward. And we think that the ad hoc liaison committee on the economic dimension of the whole peace process is a very good uh, process that we need to support. And of course, the initiatives that have popped up in recent months since we have launched our initiative, and to some extent, we're not unhappy with the fact that our initiative may have triggered here and there some of our partners to come back to the peace process agenda and try to do something, namely John Kerry, who was back recently on the track with some of his ideas about regional initiative, the invitation by President Putin for the two leaders to come to Moscow, the Egyptians, Diplomat, diplomatic efforts, so on and so forth. We think all this is very good. And we, on the contrary, have no problem. We're not, uh, we are in an inclusive mood, and we think that the more we have partners ready to commit themselves and do some efforts to try to move the peace process forward, this is a great thing. Mm. Third point, and I would like to underline that, this multilateral involvement and the fact that we are asking the international community to step in is in no way trying to interfering and imposing our solution on the two sides. It's about tapping into the goodwill of some of our partners in the international community that we haven't heard a lot discussing or talking about the two-state uh, solution. You know, what's interesting about our initiative, and if at the end of the day that's the only outcome, I think it would be a, a useful outcome, is that since we launched that initiative, we heard partners like China, Indonesia, Japan, South Africa, Senegal, Brazil, Australia, Canada, stepping in and telling us what can we do to help because this is a responsibility for the whole international community and we have the feeling that we have been somewhat left aside and that maybe we could help you and play a useful part in pushing things forward. Just to give you an example, we had a meeting last week about the economic dimension and the special envoy from China traveled right from Beijing to Paris to participate in that meeting. Not that I would like to undermine the attraction of Paris as a nice city to come and, and visit, but I still think he did it for other purposes. And discussing with him before and afterwards seems to me very telling about the kind of interest now we have from some of these countries. And I think this is something we need to take on, to take on board. So and let's be a little bit more positive. What is the initiative about? I think, first of all, and I would like to repeat that because I think that's important. If we can have some sort of reaffirmation and commitment by all those who will go along with our initiative and participate in what we hope will be a conference before the end of the year uh, that can discuss this, to have from all our partners a commitment to the two-state solution would be something very interesting. And by the way, if you allow me, if ever at the end of the day, the Israeli government decides to come to a conference. I'm very cautious. I don't want to make any prediction on that one. But it would be a perfect format and a perfect arena so that everybody at last uh, thinks that the, uh, 
commitment by the Israeli government to the two-state solution is genuine, sincere, and uh, deeply, uh, deeply based and uh, grounded in, in, in strong convictions. And that would be, let's be honest, very helpful. Secondly, what we would like to do also is to show on two or three points well focused for that purpose that some conditions are needed so that the two-state solution can move ahead. One of them, and you may be interested in that, is how to rekindle in both civil society in Israel as with the Palestinians to um, rekindle the public debate about the two-state solution. What we hear today from civil society on both sides is forget about it, it's over, it's finished. Uh, what you're trying to do is push back on the table something that has disappeared and that is irrelevant today. Our opinion is that it is not and that we can try to give a, a new lease of life to this and that we could, through a public debate, show that this is still something on which civil society on both sides is committed to. It's about, secondly, helping the Palestinian Authority to consolidate its state capacities. You know, what I hear time and again, it's, it's all very well that you're trying to build two state solution. But on one side, you have a state that still doesn't exist, and the day it may exist may be a state that will not have the capacity to act as a real full-fledged state. So to answer that criticism and that argument, we need, without any further delay, to keep on helping the Palestinian Authority to build up its state capacity. A lot was done with former Prime Minister Salam Fayyad. We still need to do more. And what we have found out discussing with our partners from the international community is that a lot of them are already working on this, but sometimes with a lack of coordination and shortcomings that we may maybe try to um, uh, solve and help to, uh, to move ahead. Third issue is about economic development. I don't know if it is a carrot or a stick at this point, but something that struck us quite obviously is that economic development at the moment is not moving exactly in the right direction. And one of the reasons for that is that all investors, public or private, are telling us time and again, we can't even work on short-term solutions because the environment, the political environment, the lack of business-friendly environment doesn't help us to move along. So uh, economic development cannot be a substitute to statehood, but it can be an incentive if you look at the potential that is there and the untapped reserves that are waiting to explain to both parties and moreover to the countries in the region that there is something there on which we could work so that we can go ahead. Third element on this content is the political dimension, of course. I talked about the need to commit uh, once again to the two-state solution. The second point we would like to underline in this initiative is the Arab Peace Initiative. This is something that is there on the table since 2002. Never got a real answer from the other side about the um, engagement into this. It's still there. It still represents for us a regional track that could be very supportive and very complement, com, a sort of complementarity to what is being done with regard to the peace process itself. And we think that through that um, initiative and through the final conference, if we could find a way, just as I said about the two-state solution, to have a new, genuine, relaunch, regain, revived uh, support to the Arab Peace Initiative, even going as far as giving to this um, uh, Arab Peace Initiative a new presentation, a more operational one, so that everybody understand what the sequency would be about, what the choreography will be about if we manage one day to implement that peace initiative, I think that would be also very, very helpful. Where do we go from there if we manage to get all that on the conference? That would be about the follow-up. And there, I would like to reassure Professor Libeber, I don't think we want at all costs to create a new process that would be cumbersome, too heavy, and would add already to what exists. We think that those who could manage to take over and to go ahead, the Quartet and many others of our partners who wish to go ahead, the new US administration, we think that what we would leave after the conference there on the table for those who would like to pick it up would be a great way forward. 
could we add at the end of the day something more relevant with uh, gaining a little bit more legitimacy to what we want to do if the conclusion seems substantial and significant enough to get them endorsed by the UN Security Council? Why not? We could look at this and see, but we will only do this if all our partners agree. So this is really what the French initiative is about. And maybe it wasn't well understood, because for once we're not showing our usual arrogance. We have been very humbled and low profile. And um, this is why people still think that uh, there's something strange in this French initiative. But we will go on. Don't worry about this. Thank you.